Hello everyone. Now, you might have heard in the news that the Queen is dead. And that means that we're also going to have a new King, and he's going to need coronating. And whilst Charles's crowning might be flashy, I doubt it will be as grand and as epic as the coronation of the Emperor of the Central African Empire, Jean Bedel Bacassa. No, this event was ridiculous, and it speaks volumes about the psyche of the guy. So, just to preface this, this guy wasn't the most stable to begin with, and once he became leader of the Central African Republic, he had the power to act on his weird impulses. So, in 1971, Mother's Day was coming up. Now, how do you respond? Maybe you get your mum a nice gift, or perhaps make food for her. Bokassa looked at this and was like, Amateurs, this is how you show love. Shall release all mothers from prison. What? You heard. Let them all go. Yep, this guy gave mothers the ultimate gift. Freedom from incarceration. Well, anyway, he looks at himself and is like, needs more pomp, so declares himself emperor. So, it's arranged that his coronation will be on December 4th, 1977. And he went all out, like getting a crown encrusted with 2,000 diamonds and erecting eight life-size biblical figures to watch over the crowd or something. He also had loads of stuff flown in from France, like over 200 kilograms of rose petals. He also got 48,000 bottles of wine, French of course, and a massive eight-layered cake, three by four feet in area. Not everything went to plan, however, like when some Yugoslav pilots refused to carry 1.5 tonnes of fireworks. The safety reason. Gee whiz, I bet this will be great for the economy. Next up were the invitations, of which there were many. So, first off, he invited the Pope, Paul VI, there, but he said no, instead sending some papal underling. Next up was an invite for the French president, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, who also declined, and sending a representative instead. Perhaps Bacassa should have got the memo by now, but he was as self-aware as a shell advert. He then tried sending invites to other monarchs, including everyone's favourite, Hirohito. And somehow, they too all said no. You know that you're not popular when even your neighbours refuse, as did several presidents <coughs> dictated, from bordering countries, including everyone's other favourite, Idi Amin. The only leaders who responded were the Prime Minister of Mauritius and the President of Mauritania both of whom sent their spouses. And even when people did accept, it was a disaster. So, remember when I said that all other monarchs declined? Well, I lied. Sue me. Prince Emmanuel of Liechtenstein accepted, but it's not exactly the Central African Empire of Nations. Well, he was set to fly into Bangwe, so an honour guard showed up. Only that he, he didn't arrive. Huh? I mean, he later did, but the debacle only underpinned the view that the whole event was a little... botched. My favourite guest involves a lad called Didier. See, there was a club called Bassoche, which was for law students at the University of Poitiers. The leader of this club was called the King, for humour reasons. Anyway, Didier wrote to Bacassa asking for a royal invite as a king, and miraculously, Bacassa accepted their request and even bought them plane tickets. Ah, uh, yes. These are my associates. And at long last, there came the procession. 4,000 guests watched as a carriage a la Napoleon pulled up to the stadium. Yeah, I've not mentioned it yet, but this guy was a bit obsessed with Napoleon. Like, he dressed up his guards in Napoleonic era clothing. They watched as Bacassa came walking up in a velvet cloak, which trailed 12 metres behind him and they watched with their ears as Mozart started to play. And Bacassa approached the bird-like throne with a four-metre wingspan. But then they remembered. It was 37 degrees Celsius, which is nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit in Liberian units, and the aircon in the stadium was broken. So yeah, people were just kind of sweaty during the proper ceremony, as the Pope's representative did the deed. Anyway, the whole affair cost $22 million dollars, which might have been up to 25% of the economy. But still, there was the feast, and Bacassa knew how to captivate his guests. You didn't notice it, but you just ate human meat. Right, well I'll leave it up to you as to whether he genuinely fed his guests people, but let's just say there was quite the court case. Well then, 